Reese again here to talk to you about week six of the Disc Golf Alley Players Tour. There's a ton of bonus strokes on these courses and some really scary ones too, especially on Frozen Valley. I'm gonna dig in on some of the holes where I think I could have a breakdown and also show you some lines that I'm actually pretty proud of. Ones that I've either figured out myself or uh, riffed on after seeing how someone else approached a hole. So I really hope these lines help you all out. Let's check them out. Of all the holes on Frozen Valley, I think five is the safest one to run for Eagle. I prefer the low line. I do think, just full disclosure, it doesn't push as far forward, but hitting the angle is so much easier. When I went big Anheuser, I would mess it up all the time. So I'm aiming kind of at this rock and just a little bit to the left, and I'm giving it a half disc into the Anheuser and trying to just flex it down this fairway. There's that one tree to miss. Ideally, I am skipping to the right of it. If you skip to the left, you can still get a sneaky look through the trees, or you might have to do some hyzer shenanigans like I'm having to do right here. It's about 10 feet downhill into the basket, so knowing that, you just gotta trust the power, give it a shot, and hope it sticks. Frozen Valley 2 is tough. Uh, I will still mess this hole up from time to time. It's not a gimme, but this is definitely my favorite. Going low with an accurate glide sapphire, and what I'm trying to do is keep the disc straight as possible. Uh, a glide grace I think is better here even. But what I'm really trying to do is get a skip on this ice and slide up to the middle island. This makes it so much easier to clear the ice on the second shot and it can set up a possible eagle, which is what I'm trying to do here just for fun. I'm going glide skip DD3, uh, but you could use any turn or any flippy driver that's glide skip just to push up the fairway. On this left side here, I'm gonna go backhand to see if I can dunk an eagle, but if you end up on the right side, uh, just go forehand. You only have that one tree in the middle to miss. And you know you don't wanna get too aggressive and skip too far away, but there is a little bit of a backstop, so you can give it a bid. Uh, really, the danger is in not clearing the ice on the second shot. On Crow's Nest 4, I like to go over the top. I like to go accurate roll Sampo. So you can see here, you know, it catches once it hits the top, and then once it hits the ground too, it also kind of tries to push away from the out of bounds. Now, if this hole gets windy, it can be a different story. A tailwind is one of those where it's an automatic run for me. I can just get a, a disc not as long as the Sampo, like here I'm going Accurate Wind Pioneer, which isn't as far, um, and I think it just works out perfect. Northern Breeze 7 is another hole, just like Frozen Valley 2, where it feels like if you're off by an inch, you're just, you know, par is the best case scenario. This, I think, is a really forgiving line going glide sapphire down this skinny gap here. Again, I'm aiming low, but not too low because you do have a floor and a ceiling. But once you get through, uh, you're just in the just dead center of the fairway and you can go uh, a, some kind of flippy driver. Here I'm going light glide captain. The danger on this second shot is really the right side. There's that OB line. Even if you get all the way to the basket and go long, you're going back to the drop zone, which is a two shot penalty, it's severe. Now, if you get out of position on this hole, it's gonna be really tempting to go glide skip, just max distance driver. And kind of like what I was saying, you know, worst case scenario here, it fades out too early and you skip past that out of bounds line, then you're looking at bogey at best. I get a little lucky on this one, even though I'm trying to illustrate the worst case scenario. What you can do if you're out of position and you know a normal driver isn't gonna go far enough, Go backhand with that that turn or flippy, you know, light glide driver. You can go sweeping backhand. The shot is surprisingly forgiving. The left side is really open. Plays so far uphill, the disc is going to stay on turn and just shape the fairway perfectly. The key guy springs three, tempts you into either going for it, trying to get over the creek. Uh, I've seen people do a skip off the bank as well. And I was actually playing that um, that for a while but just seemed a little inconsistent to me so I was looking for a new line and then I saw a, a friend from the drop zone go huge sky Anheuser and it made me think I wonder if you could lay up and hit that for an eagle 
So that's what I'm gonna show you. I've been doing this since the course has been out, basically. I'm just going Glide Sapphire, and I'm really trying to push as far as I can without going into the creek. So once I do that, I have this, this tree here, which is my, uh, my, my general kind of aim point for bending it around. I'm aiming near the top, and I'm splitting the power band with my pullback, if you can see that. And I'm trying to just hit this fairway on Anheuser. The fact that it's a glide skip rive means it's going to slowly pan, but also just skip forward, even if it is still on an Anheuser angle. You can push up even further than this. You know, sometimes you end up in the trees on the left, but the worst thing that can happen is a birdie, which is way better than if you're trying to cross the creek on your first shot. Hole eight on Ikigai Springs used to scare me. And then I got an Accurate Glide Sapphire. It just made it so simple. I'm just aiming low uh, below this rock. I'm sliding over. I want the disc to bend straight. You know, it does have some Anheuser, but it misses those trees on the right. And then it just skips right up to the basket. It doesn't go long. It's just an easy button for this hole. Uh, I love this line. Frozen Valley is really the course to look out for this week. The first half, like holes two, three, and four are just so tough. That's why hole five is so nice to have a safe eagle bid. Nine under there is going to be competitive for sure. So don't get too greedy. Just take what you can and don't feel bad about laying up on the other ones. Hope to see y'all up on the leaderboard. I hope these lines help. And if you have a different way of approaching these holes, I'd love to see it. Uh, drop it in the comments and I'll definitely check it out.